Well, hello. I have read some rather exciting news today about uh, Rover. Apparently, they are making a comeback next year uh, because Jaguar Land Rover own the name. It's up to them to bring it back whenever they want and they've decided that they are going to do it, which is fabulous news. Uh, the only trouble is where I've actually read this. Yeah, I read it there just about five minutes ago. Yeah, that's right. I just made that news up. But then most news seems to be made up these days, doesn't it? But, however, there is still a slight possibility of this actually happening because Rover is, the name Rover, is actually owned by Jaguar Land Rover. As I've just said, that bit is true. So there's always a possibility that they might think maybe we should bring this back. So is it ever likely to happen? Personally, I can't see any reason why they shouldn't do it. I mean, Rover have become much, much more popular over the past few years. Uh, that might be because many more people are realizing that, you know, they weren't as bad as what uh, the likes of Clarkson said they were. They actually, they made better cars and better engines than their competitors, or at least the cheap end of the competitors. And they had all this weight around the neck of everything. I mean, you know, this cost cutting nonsense as well. Would you actually buy one though? I mean, if you could, uh, you could afford it. And you was in the market for a new car and you have the choice between, say your Fords or your Vauxhalls. Oh, God, this is boring. I couldn't imagine really actually choosing something like a, a Vauxhall Vectra back in the early 2000s against a 75. It just seems bonkers, why would you? Maybe it's not a very fair comparison. We all know Vauxhalls are, you know, dull, not particularly well made, especially around that time. And are they really competitors? Well, they were a bit, weren't they? I mean, a similar kind of size. And, and now, of course, we've had the benefit of hindsight and we can see that there are many more of the Rovers around than what there was the equivalent Fords or Vauxhalls, or BMWs for that matter. Or BMWs, oh, BMWs, oh gosh, oh, I just thought, Volkswagen. Anyway, as I walk into the darkness now, and I realise I've forgotten my torch, and I've also realised that this video is not really going anywhere because I didn't think of anything to say before I started. It really would be absolutely wonderful to have some like the 75 back in production. It's such a handsome car. It even looks good with bits missing off it, like the front bumper and the engine. Lots of people say that all modern cars look the same. I can't really agree with that, to be honest. And there's quite a few that are quite nice, quite sort of handsome, quite cute, even. Not Fiat 500 though, I don't really like that. So, I'm very much of the opinion that if Rover could be resurrected, they'd actually do quite well. Because what we're missing um, in the car industry is anything that actually feels British that's also affordable. All the cars that you see these days, they may be very good, very clever and everything, but um, not saying they're, they all look the same, because they don't, well, I mean, they do a bit, but that's not really the point. They're just not interesting. They just haven't got anything quirky. And British, British are quirky. The thing with uh, British things though, and British people, is that uh, I believe we're more interesting than the, uh, the Europeans. We're more quirky. We're more likely to be eccentric. But then, we're also more likely to be completely useless and embarrassing, and not even be able to speak our own language, never mind anyone else's. And that's, that's probably how the rest of the world sees Britain. And while we've got no real motor industry of our own, that's how they're going to continue to see us. And that's a shame. If Rover was to come back and we could have proper Rover, like the old ones, uh, proper British designs and not being embarrassed by it, looking British. The Rover P5, Rover P6, the Triumph 2000, 2500, all of the Triumphs, come to think of it, all look very, very British. Uh, the Jags, Jaguar, uh, 
They used to look British, now they don't really look too British any longer, they look kind of German, don't they? So, why don't we buy British cars? Or why didn't we buy British cars? The British car industry was ruined by corruption and people who didn't really want to go to work. I mean, uh, unionists. BL had some fantastic ideas and innovation, but without the workforce that took pride in it, the whole thing was somewhat academic. The term British workforce become somewhat of an oxymoron, whilst our European rivals took advantage and stole sales from under our noses of the great British public. <laughs> BL had the kind of workforce that Nissan and Honda have today in the UK. We might still be driving around in modern day Allegro's. Perish the thought. And that was a joke because a modern day Allegro would probably be really good. In fact, why wouldn't it be? I mean, the old one wasn't any worse than any of the thoughts that were about at the time. It's just they have an undeserved reputation. Consider this though, Ford made much worse cars than BL. I mean, they were terrible dustbins with awful engines, but they had that transatlantic look and that got the Brits all misty eyed, all wanting a slice of that fake American dream. And these days, all these years later, nostalgia plays a really big part in making these awful thoughts desirable. So many people had them at the time and they just want a piece of the past to try and recapture their youth, so to speak. But of course they want the sporty model, the ones that they hankered after while growing up and couldn't afford 